What are some of the unintentional consequences that may occur from our attack on Libya? Just a couple days ago, I was complaining about the president not coming to the Congress to get the proper authority to wage war. Because imposing a no-fly zone over a country is an act of war. Instead, he was quite content to get his authority from the United Nations. I find that just a bit annoying, and I hope all Americans would find it the same way. But, you know, to me it's sort of ironic as well, and I don't believe it was coincidental, that this attack occurred on the anniversary of our attack eight years ago against Iraq. And of course then it was shock and awe and would be over in a week or two and of course the military success was there but it still lingers. There still is not a settlement in Iraq. So how long might this last in Libya? This could go on for a long, long time. You know, it was said that the United uh, Arab League uh, condoned and encouraged uh, the United States and the other countries to impose this uh, no-fly zone. But yet today, the United Arab League has just called an emergency uh, meeting because it wasn't exactly what they expected. They didn't expect civilians to be killed, and they are upset about it now and actually are uh, about to withdraw their support and are very annoyed on how this turned out. And this is just within hours. I find it utterly amazing to see that the United States, with this modern, wonderful technology, can take off three B-2 bombers from the United States fly over to a country like Libya, drop 40 bombs, and then fly all the way back. I just wish the ability to perform technologically uh, could be translated into uh, some wise diplomacy at times. It just seems like we concentrate on the militarism and not on the diplomacy. 112 tom Tomahawk missiles landed on that country civilians have been killed and this will not endear ourselves to the Arab world there is no way even though the British and the French are involved we will still be blamed and we will be paying most of the bills but there's a bit of irony here also because at the same time we're there for our so-called humanitarian reasons there are other crises going on. You know, uh, our close allies, uh, uh, the uh, Sharia-run government of Saudi Arabia, they're using force to suppress, uh, uh, you know, dis dissent in Bahrain. They've literally sent troops into Bahrain. And uh, yet it's the same principle. The people are annoyed with their government, so we would support one illegitimate r regime or, you know, ruthless regime. At the same time, we decide the other person has to go. There's no way we can defend Gaddafi as a great leader, but it's also interesting to note that our Secretary of State has decided to put a lot of blame and a lot of concern on the Iranians, which I find awfully interesting, because it just may be that that is the bigger issue, and what is going on in Bahrain might even be a more important issue than the, the grand uh, uh, bombing and attack on Libya. Uh, sometimes I think they do things to distract us from what is really going on. So to me, this, this is just the beginning. It's very costly. It's going to cost us uh, diplomatically. It's going to cost us financially. And it may well not go uh, away quickly. Uh, even though the military, there's nobody can touch us militarily. This whole idea that we're doing this for national security just just blows my mind because there is no chance in the world that a country like Libya could be a threat to us. And then to hide behind world government, the United Nations, that go in and justify this, claim that oil has nothing to do with this. We need, as a country and especially as a Congress, to wake up and actually take upon ourselves the responsibilities that have been given us. We should not allow a president to do this on his own without even asking us. And uh, yet the Congress generally rolls over and does whatever they say. And unfortunately, this is sad to say, but foreign policy hasn't changed. Obama used this as a good example of, uh, of celebrating the eight-year uh, attack on uh, Iraq. Uh, yet, unfortunately, the policies haven't changed. The policies, they sound exactly the same. Eventually, the American people are going to get tired of this, I hope real soon, but if they don't get tired of it, 
it'll have to end because it's going to tr contribute so significantly to our bankruptcy. And I think we're on the way to that point. So the sooner we as a country wake up, the better.